Harry Baldock here, editor at Total Telecom. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Steve Roberts, Senior Vice President of Product Management at Extra Infrastructure. And we're going to discuss some of the company's latest news, uh, as well as some of the trends in the submarine cable industry in uh, 2022. Steve, thanks very much for joining me today. Thank you, Harry. Before we go any further, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and about Exer Infrastructure? Be happy to. Uh, yeah, so Steve Roberts, I'm responsible for um, Exer's strategic um, investment program. Uh, so this relates to um, organic um, network investment. This is looking at how we um, develop our network footprint, um, both adding more uh, capillarity, um, connecting more data center and cable landing station um, locations. Um, as well as adding new routes into new new territories, new regions um, adjacent to our footprint. And that also includes making um, select um, investments in new cable systems that are being built in our region, um, as well as taking an active um, involvement in new cables, uh, be landing party, cable landing station operator, backhaul provider. Exit infrastructure, as, uh, as most people know now, is, um, is the, um, the best assets from, from GTT, um, comprising the, the interroute uh, terrestrial um, footprint within Europe, um, and the three Hibernia uh, cables across the Atlantic, and uh, uh, a network within uh, the northeast of the US and, and Canada. So we're six, seven months into EXA now. Um, it's been a, an exciting journey and uh, we've, we've achieved quite a lot in the last, the last six months. Um, and there's a, there's a lot more that we're, we're planning over the next three or four years. Um, EXA infrastructure is, uh, is entirely focused on infrastructure services. What that means is we are uh, layer zero, dark fiber, duct, um, layer one, uh, optical transmission services, and an overlay of um, deterministic ethernet services, uh, typically for, for low latency um, applications. Um, plus, we have a, a, a footprint of about 300 co-location facilities around Europe and, and North America. So we, we don't go into the IP space at all. Uh, we have no managed service offerings. We don't compete with our, with our customers. We really are entirely focused on, on uh, wholesale, um, large infrastructure projects. You've had quite an exciting week this week with a, a couple of different different announcements I wanted to uh, to ask you about. Uh, the, the first one was about this this deal with Trans Adriatic Pipeline that, that you're forming a joint venture. It's making a new fibre route connecting uh, France and Turkey, I believe. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, and it's, it's something we're really excited about as well. And I think it represents um, certainly a, a, an, an example of the kind of investment that uh, that EXO is looking to make going forward. Um, so we, we started with, um, with, with TAP uh, last summer, actually be, before EXA um, existed, um, but it, it was identified as the, the kind of project that, that EXA wants to do moving forward. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a very exciting project. So uh, Trans-Adriatic Pipeline um, is, the, is a portion of, of a gas pipeline that actually runs from the Caspian Sea uh, through Azerbaijan, through Turkey, through Greece, Albania, and then ends up in southern Italy in a place called um, Melandunia. Um, joint venture is with the, the portion of that pipeline that runs through Greece, Albania to Italy, which is, um, which is the Trans-Adriatic Pipeline. And um, in essence, what we've, what we've um, created is a joint venture um, between EXA and the uh, TAP, the owner of the, the, the pipeline where we will um, have the exclusive um, commercialization and operation rights for the dark fiber that's been installed along, along this pipeline. And it's, it's, it's a fairly common model actually that um, most types of utility, whether they're, <laughs> whether they're roads, train lines, gas lines, uh, oil pipelines, um, have some kind of um, telecommunications infrastructure installed alongside them, purely for, for the telemetry purposes of, of operating that, that asset safely. And um, TAP is, is exactly the same as that. Um, when when the, the pipeline was built about five years ago, 
um, they installed um, ducts on either side of that, that pipeline, actually separated about uh, five meters apart, um, and then installed fiber optic cable um, within, the, within those ducts. Um, clearly, the, the, the telemetry needs are actually very small, so there's, um, there, there's plenty, of, plenty of fiber available um, to be used for commercial telecommunications purposes. Um, we think it's a great, a great asset. Um, I mean, it's 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 very current. It's the um, the latest technology of fiber. Um, it's it's one of the most recent pipelines to be built. Um, so it's it, it's very safe. It's um, a, a highly available infrastructure. Um, you don't tend to have people um, digging up the road close to a, a high pressure gas line. Um, so you know the the, the risk of, of that fiber being disturbed is 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 very low. Um, the fact that there's actually two two duct routes laid either side of the pipeline means that you actually have twice twice the resilience as well. Um, and then the nature of it being a gas line uh, means that it was built in the most direct path possible, um, which means uh, to to our customers it provides a very low latency, very direct. Route. What's quite nice about it is there's a the subsea section that actually runs between um, Melendugno in southern Italy and uh, Fia in Albania is um, is again a, a, a very new cable um, and latest quality fiber and it's very short it's about 120 kilometers so um, all in all it's a, you know, it's a very interesting infrastructure um, from that core pipeline we've uh, We'll be building extensions um, into the main the, the, the main markets in that region. So there'll be an extension that comes down to, to Athens, uh, another extension up to Sofia, uh, an extension to Tirana, and then finally an extension um, across the Turkish border into Istanbul, uh, which will actually give um, EXA three fully diverse routes out of out of Istanbul. You mentioned there that it's a very direct route, and that obviously has big implications for, for latency. In terms of your customers, what, what kind of difference does it make having a direct route like that compared to existing multi-stage routes? Yeah, I, I mean, I think when you look at the, uh, the existing infrastructures in, in that region, um, you know, there's, there's not really uh, one operator that can provide that end-to-end that -end route on net um, between between Istanbul through Greece to Italy and, and then up to Milan. Um, the existing infrastructures in the region, um, you, you would have to put together circuits from two or three or maybe even four separate providers to do that. So, you know, I think it comes back down to the, the operational simplicity of it. Um, it's it's one, one on that service end to end. Um, which also in, in improves reliability, fault fix, et cetera. And um, commercially as well, being, being provided by a, a single provider, you know, we, we expect that um, you know, we can certainly um, you know, help our, our, our clients to, to, you know, to achieve a low cost base on this. The other announcement that you put out recently was around uh, CapEx investments. I think you've just had a new investment program worth, uh, is, I think it's 190 million euros. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that money is going to be spent and kind of what's next for EXA? Certainly. So I mean, the, the 190 million is just is just the beginning of, of what I squared want to do with, with EXA. Um, they've actually, they, they, their business plan is, is all based on the, on the assumption or the, the premise that uh, EXA was un under invested previously, which, which, which is quite true. So certainly through the interroute years, there wasn't so much of a focus on being an infrastructure company. Interroute had some other ideas. Uh, GTT had a, a CapEx light model. Um, so certainly the platform wasn't invested as well as um, you know, some of our competitors had done. So, so the, the entire premise when, when I squared acquired us was that they were going to put a significant amount of, of capex into the business um, to um, address new markets and to to increase the utilization um, of of the existing footprint. Um, so that started with um, over, over the last six months the the first tranche of, of projects that we we've approved, which uh, you're, you're quite right is 
uh, 190 million euros uh, of approved projects there. And that's that's spread across um, you know, about around 10, um, 10 projects. Um, but, but that excludes things like um, maintenance capex and general BAU capex. This is capex um, entirely targeted at, uh, at new strategic routes and new strategic um, expansion. Um, and, and within that, there's um, there's a number of projects um, across the entire footprint. Um, TAP is one of them, um, but adjacent to T TAP, we've made um, additional vest investments in the region, um, also uh, an investment on the Ionian cable system to put a, a second diverse route into uh, into Greece, which is entirely complementary to the to the TAP routes. Um, we're making quite a large investment in uh, Crotone in, in, in southern Italy, um, which is where the, the Isla Link cable actually lands on the Italian side. We're, we're installing a new 350 kilometer route, um, new cable back up to um, towards Bari to make um, the, the Isla Link cable effectively on net um, to, to the Exxon network. Um, you know, and then beyond that, we've got uh, you know, we've got a broad range of um, of investments um, covering lo lots of different regions. Um, I mean, we, we, we're focusing, um, it's, so Western Europe, for example, um, over pulling some of the existing routes we have there around FLAP with latest uh, fiber technology cable. Um, and then, but more so looking a little bit adjacent to, to FLAP. Um, trying to find markets that are a little bit underserved and also you know, trying to trying to predict some of the um, the future demand that we expect to see in a region so uh, you know an example of that would be <clears throat> a new route that we're we're, we're building between um, Bilbao and and Barcelona obviously classically Bilbao has you know, is a um, a hub for for transatlantic cables um, we certainly are aware of new cables that, that are landing in that region and we expect that over the coming years there, there will be a few more landing along that coastline obviously when you look at the um, um on the other side on the mediterranean side in, in barcelona there's there's three cables landing there at the moment and there's the, the barcelona cable landing station number of new carrier neutral data centers being being built there some are announced, some some are not met, yet announced, um, but we see that as, as a key growth area. So you know, building a direct um, fiber route between the two make, makes a lot of sense to us and we see a lot of interest in that. Um, you know, other investments uh, revolve around um, the subsidy space again. So uh, Paris to Marseille is, a, is an in interesting route, um, and a very important route um, for us. Um, we've actually needed to install a brand new cable between Marseille to Lyon um, to Paris in support of um, the growing fiber requirements on, on that route. So again, that'll be a brand new, brand new cable, high fiber count, latest fiber technology. Um, yeah, and then beyond that, we you know we continue to, to focus on other other subsea projects as well. So um, there's a there's a project. Um, we're we're not quite ready to to fully announce it, but we've we've alluded to to a new route between uh, London and Amsterdam, um, which includes a, a new crossing of the North Sea. Um, again, we're very excited about that. That's um, that will be one of the the the, the latest cables on on that particular route, um, and then further investments we will extend that via Brussels to Frankfurt, uh, which should create one of the lowest latency uh, and newest cables on, on that route between London and Frankfurt. Um, Southern Italy is also um, important for us. Um, in fact, all, all of Italy, um, I think historically Interroute um, has, has been very active um, within Italy, you know, probably um, you know, been the, the, the second provider within Italy and we've, we've landed a number of cables, we operate a number of cable landing stations um, in, in the region. And um, there's certainly a lot more activity there at the moment with cables from the Middle East 
um, that will be landing in Italy over the next couple of years. So again, we see um, we see a big focus on um, reinforcing our infrastructure, new cable overpools, building new routes uh, within within Italy. Um, Rome's expanding as well. Um, a number of new data centers been set up there. So yeah, you know, really, um, really exciting time for the subsea space in, in Italy. And uh, we, we're certainly going to be part of that moving forward. I mean, it sounds like it's going to be an exciting time for, for the whole of Europe, really. I, I think um, one of the things that's kind of become clear to me in the last couple of years is that the, the amount of investment in, in, in European subsea industry is, is really going through the roof at the moment. Do you, do you think that's going to continue? Uh, like, what, what do you think the investment landscape looks like over the next 10 years? Yeah, interesting. I think, um, you know, but by any, um, you know, any of the analysts, um, any of the forecasts that, 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 that you see, um, yeah, it, there, there appears to be no, no slowdown in the growth over, over the next 10 years. You know, there's um, you know, healthy, healthy CAGAs being, being predicted across, you know, across all of Europe. Um, I mean, clearly, you know, the, the attractive markets of, of the flat markets, there is a lot of competition there. And um, you know, we, we, we may well see some, some kind of new market entrants or, or people expanding from, from being a, a regional or domestic provider, expanding out to try and um, you know, address more of those, those flat routes and Emerging from being a domestic provider to, to an international provider, I think I think we will we will see that. Um, and th and then the other side of that is 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 spotting the um, the kind of emerging markets. So so I, I think there's a yeah, there's a combination of you know in, investment in people becoming more international in in the high growth markets and, and the, the very biggest markets, and then there's the, the more niche investments, a little bit like TAP, for example, of, of looking into uh, what is an emerging market, but one that's, that's forecast to be a high, a high growth market. So you know, with that, you, you then see certain people making targeted investments in, in those more niche but underserved markets like Central and Eastern Europe, Southern Europe, um, you know, the, the Balkans, etc. So you know, in in the subsea space, um, we see no let up in 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 the number of cables um, being built and the number of cables being being planned, um, which is which is exciting for us as a um, you know, as 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 a um, someone with, with demonstrable experience of of operating CLSs, being landing parties, um, that that there, there's a big opportunity there in Europe, um, both cables coming from the Middle East, India, the Far East, landing in Europe, um, and then still the transatlantic, th there's still a lot to go there. I think uh, telegeography predict another, another 40 cables in the next, uh, the next 15 years. And um, you know, absolutely, EXA and others are, are going to be making investments in, 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 in that space. Um, I think the you know, the, the, the transatlantic cables, uh, or in fact, any subsea cables now, we're seeing the, the fiber, power, fiber pair counts increasing to the point that 24 pairs is now becoming pretty much, pretty much standard for, for, for any serious build. And you know, the, 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 the clever guys are telling us that there'll be 50 pairs within, within three or four years. Um, you know, and I think the impact there is that, on, on the backhaul requirements is that uh, we're going to need more backhaul connectivity from from these coastal locations back to back to the main data center clusters. Um, so yeah, you know, a, a handful of transatlantic cables in a few years' time could um, you know, could could generate hundreds of fiber pairs of of, of backhaul requirements. So there is going to have to be you know, a, a major investment, major overhaul programs in in upgrading. That infrastructure, um, and uh, and yeah, I, I think that in, in the subsea and, and backhaul space, that, that that's where I see the, the the main investments happening. It's clearly a very very exciting time for uh, the subsea industry. Steve, thanks very much for talking to me today. It's been great.